Hi everyone, I'm Daniel. Superfang99 is here with me as always for our scenario review of The Pallid Mask, scenario number six of the Path to Carcosa, and you know it as the Catacomb scenario. This is a fun one. Mm -hmm. uh, my personal favorite in this campaign, so I'm excited to talk about it. I don't know if it's my favorite. It could be. I don't sure I've really sat down and really thought about it, but it is a highlight, and I love playing it. It's one I look forward to, which is true about the Unspeakable Oath, too, but this one is really cool. Let's take a look. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So the important thing for this scenario is that the locations are going to be constructed in a Catacombs deck. Um, first, we need to talk about if you interviewed Ishimaru Haruko. Because if you did, we remember that you opened a secret passageway, which will also affect the setup of this Catacombs deck somewhat. Um, so if you all remember from Miskatonic Museum back in Dunwich, uh, we're going to be making a Catacombs deck. We take two locations, the, uh, what are they called? The, uh, the... Uh, block Passage. The Block Passage and the Tomb of Shadows. Yep. Um, we take two, those two locations, we take one more randomly from the deck, we shuffle those together to make the bottom three of the catacombs deck, and then we shuffle everything else to make the top ele top seven or whatever. Um, I guess top eight. Um, but notably, also you also start in uh, the gates to hell if you're able to succeed the previous scenario. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, I think it's just a random one that you put into play. Is that right? It is. It's a random one. Yeah. Other than those, I have never done that. Like, like I said, I lost the last one once. Yeah, there you it, go. It did happen once. Nice. It does have a um, weird interaction with the later on in the uh, scenario, but never mind that. Oh, interesting. Um, but yeah, that location that you start at is known as the starting location. You put a resource on it. Um, and importantly, every location, when it is revealed, puts new locations from the Catacombs deck into play from the top. So... For example, the Gate to Hell puts one up, uh, above, and below. Uh, and finally, if you opened a secret passageway, aka you interviewed Ishimaru Haruko, you can reveal one of those catacombs locations adjacent to the starting location for free. Mm -hmm. um, that is important because every catacombs also says, as an additional cost for you to enter catacombs, the investigators at your location must spend one per investigator clues as a group. So, you're going to be gathering clues from your locations, exploring the catacombs, and building the map as you go. This is why this is my favorite scenario, because literally every single time, the map is always different, and it's, it's so cool. Um, I don't know, do you play any, uh, do you, have you played Clank, the board game? No, I haven't. So they recently came out with a standalone version of Clank called Clank Catacombs. Oh. And in my head, I am like, they got to have gotten that idea from this scenario, or at least, you know, those two games share the mechanical inspiration of this between them. Because in that game, you also build the dungeon that you're going through tile-wise as you explore. Um, anyway. It's so cool. It's a, you, you get all kinds of fun shapes. Sometimes you get a, like a narrow corridor. Sometimes you get mm -hmm. everything in a nice big rectangle. Uh, sometimes there's like some dead ends and we'll see those as we look at the different locations, but it's so much fun to play this one because you just don't know what to, to expect. There's a little bit yeah. of, uh, you know, things you can do to try to get locations to come out in a certain order. Like you want to put something that's connecting to something that's already out there. Um, but for the most part, you just sort of enjoy the ride. Yep. And, um, I believe I haven't actually run the numbers on these, but it is, more like not more likely but there are more ways for the catacombs to expand to the right and down there are some that can go up and there are some that can go left but mostly it's to the right and down um and so you get this really cool pattern where it's not like completely random where it's opening out from the center but it's like random but in a direction aka down and away which i think is an excellent way to actually make the catacombs feel real yeah um, that's so cool yeah anyway uh we need to find the block uh sorry we need to find the tomb of shadows and uh i'm sorry technically we don't know that but we need to find the man the pallet mouse because he's actually removed from your deck during setup yep. i always forget that mm -hmm. um and yeah and once you find him in the tomb of shadows 
uh, we're going to do some stuff. Do you want to go through the locations before we do that, or do you want to do it after? Let's do locations. Okay. So I'm just going to I'm just gonna pull from the top, and we'll go one by one. Yeah, let's let's just build a map like as if we were exploring. Sure. Might be fun. So I guess we'll put some down here. Uh, so candlelit tunnels. When it's revealed, we put one to the left and one to the right. Okay, already we were messing this up. So left and then to the right. Oops. We should have a second one, though, because of this, right? Below here? Sure. Um, all right. And yes, so we need to... Actually, I guess we should probably actually, actually do the real thing, then shuffle this and put three on the bottom. Perfect. Okay. So candlelit tunnels has an effect where you can test three intellect, and you can look at the revealed side of any catacombs locations in play. This one, I honestly rarely do, but it is nice if you're like, does that location have victory? Or near the end, you're like, okay, which location is the Tomb of Shadows? Which one's the block passage, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Shall we go right? Yeah. Ooh. It's the Well of Souls. Four shot one per victory one. So we put it above, below, or to the right. So I would probably put it below in this case. Yep. Uh, and when you end your turn here, you must either take a direct horror or discard two random cards in your hand. I love these locations because they force you, or they force you, they encourage you not to stay in one place. So it really adds this level of you're not always going straight through the catacombs. Maybe you're coming back and maybe you decide to go somewhere else that time. Um, so yeah, it has those, uh, it has the edge of the earth effects where you don't want to stay there your whole turn. Especially since it has a victory point, right? So you yep. want to get the clues, but if you can not stay here, then that's even better. Even better. All right, let's go to the next one. It's the Shivering Pools. So same after you end your turn, you take a direct horror, sorry, a direct damage or lose five resources. So I guess it's the parallel to this one. Mm -hmm. Lose five is pretty tough. Although if you only have one resource, you can still choose it since you are changing the game state. That's correct. So that is nice. All right. Uh, this one into play below or to the right. Let's go below. Sure. And let's open this one. Ah, the stone archways. So yeah, these ones are cool because you can ignore the text on unrevealed locations adjacent to stone archways. And this is really cool. Again, this location was already here, but now that this location's here, you can go through there and ignore the text without it spending clues. And you can go down from this way too. Ah, yes, because you don't have to be here in order to ignore it. It's That's just right. ignored forever. Mm -hmm. All right, so this one also goes into play to the right. Should we check out this left one? Yeah, let's go backwards. All right, Labyrinth of Bones. So this one's just a huge labyrinth full of bones. You put a bunch <laughs> of locations out. Above, below, and to the right. Above, below, so just below. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move these down a little bit. This is not a map that I've created. I can tell I, you. I have never seen this map before. This is so cool. I know, it's fun. All right. Ah, the ah. narrow shaft. So yes, yeah, so when you would move from narrow shaft to an unrevealed location, that is very important. Mm -hmm. You can still leave narrow shaft to a revealed location and you're fine. But if you're exploring a new one, then you must test agility three. If you fail, you take a damage and cancel the effects. So this, see, this is a way you do the Arkham Woods location. Yes. <laughs> because yes, you can't you it stops you from going to the unrevealed one, but maybe you're just not good at agility, and so therefore you decide. Okay, this this is our dead end. We will go back the way we came and go somewhere else. So we can put something to the right, above or to the right. Yes. And so yeah, importantly. Um, oh now, wow, we can get here through. The oh my stone god. Archways. This is, again. This is like this is so cool. Yeah. Like I have never seen this uh, configuration before. That's so cool. I love it. Ah, the crypt of the sepulchral lamp. This is an Arkham Woods location. <laughs> it is. Yeah, so you have to investigate with willpower. Yep. Uh, all right, put the top two uh, above and to the right. Again, to the right. Uh, let's read this one. Another labyrinth of bones, so above, below, and to the right. And notably, we're in the bottom three, so we have the chance of getting our Tomb of Shadows and our uh, Hidden Passageway. Okay. Uh, let's save this one for last, then. Sure. See this one. Ah, it's the Blocked Passage. When you reveal blocked passage, take two damage and you cannot leave. This one's killer. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It uh, stops you in your tracks. It's for sure a dead end. It spawns no more locations. Um, and taking that two damage can be pretty bad. Dead end. I love it. I love the uh, description there. The later text uh, gives new <laughs> meaning to the phrase dead end. Perfect. Nice. All right. Let's talk about this one. The bone-filled cavern. Oh, this is a cool one. 
while you're investigating, you have one fewer hand slot. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I guess if you have two magnifying glasses, you have to drop one. Um, but it does mean that, like, for example, if you're a fighter, don't investigate here because you might have to drop a weapon, um, which is hilarious. Yep. And this one goes below and to the right. So we'll put our last one out. And uh, let's take a look at it. So another stone archways. Of course, we have none left, but there would be one over here. Lastly, there's this one. Was this a victory one? No, it was another candlelit tunnels. This is so cool. I've never seen... This is so cool. Yeah. Usually so it cool. goes like off in this direction somewhere, but we went down yeah. instead of... We... So this decision we made here to put it below was so cool. Yeah. Yeah. And again, a lot of it is player driven. Like you can make this... Like sometimes when, it, when there's a choice, you're like, yes, we can just go keep going down, keep going right. But sometimes you're like, yeah, let's make this go and go down. This was next to the gate to hell. Oh, it makes this cool pattern. It's so cool. Um, Plus, like, maybe you want to sync up with someone who got left behind. And that's yeah. kind of just cool. Like, what if and, someone And this rectangle, right yeah. this rectangle is very, very good for a certain enemy that does show up. Yes. Um, so that's good. Anyway, we got to the Tomb of Shadows. So once we go here, we advance the act. All right. So... We spawn the Man of the Paladin Mask, and also Ishimaru Harugo shows up, if she's not dead, uh, uh, over here. She's huge, and she's going to hunt through you. Where's yep. the... I don't actually have the man. Let's go get him. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right, yeah, we have our Man of the Paladin Mask. So, our act, we have a choice. This whole time, you know, we've been either investigating the location to get chasing the stranger, or we've been defeating him, and now our objective is directly tied to which one we want to do. So, this one is perhaps the most, like, I never remember which one it is, but if you think about it really hard, it does kind of make sense on which one is conviction and which one is doubt, because each one is a different one. Um, so. First one should be conviction. The first one should be, tell us how to stop the path from opening. Co correct, because the path is real. The path is real. Whereas what is he trying to show us is doubt. Is that actually correct? Let's find out. All right. So if we defeated the man in the powered mask, we get two conviction. That is correct. Yes. The thematics work. We know about Carcosa and Haster. Now tell us how to stop this madness. Yep. All right. So we get Act 3A, The Way Out, which is a very weird act. You basically have to go back to the gate to hell um, or I should say, you have to go to the gate to hell because it not isn't necessarily at the starting location, but it's somewhere. Yeah. Um, yeah, so <laughs> if it is into play. Oh, interesting. So if it's unrevealed, you can kind of just do whatever you want. For the uh, end of the round thing? Right. Yeah. As in, it doesn't do anything. You can kind of just mosey around and then eventually find it. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's what I was referring okay. to at the beginning. If you haven't revealed it already, then like it doesn't do much yet. Yeah. Once again, that has never happened to me, but it is possible. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so other locations are going to be discarded farthest from the gate to hell, and uh, enemies and investigators at the location are going to be moved, and two damage is going to be dealt to either of them. Unfortunately, this does get rid of victory locations, which is really dumb. They should have just said, or add it to the victory display. Yeah, if it has no clues on it. It uh, really should have said that. Yeah. It is really annoying if, you know, there's a bunch of victory over here, and you literally lose four victory because it took you a while to get back to the get to hell. It really does suck. That's the one bad thing about the scenario. Do you think that was intentional? I don't think so. Um, cause, which is weird because they don't fix it in the return tube, right? Yeah, so like um, the victory on the Tomb of Shadows itself means that, like... It's yeah. it's most likely going to be the first one to get discarded as well. Yeah. So like I don't know, I think they just didn't realize that that wouldn't put it in the victor display. Yeah, I don't like it. Yeah. Or yep. you just have everyone running. Uh, what is it? Join the caravan or something. Join the caravan. Correct. Uh, astral travel. Yep. Um, you put a gate on the gate to hell. Yeah. Perfectly thematic. <laughs> open a gate uh, to hell. <laughs> open exactly. Open a gate to hell. Um, that's what the card is for. Anyway, uh, and once you get there, you will advance. However. Yeah. If you went, if you spent clues, then you mark doubt instead, and you go leading the way, which is definitely the easier version of the two. Especially because, so you're supposed to go to the block passage. It's probably pretty near where you just were. So probably, 
I do like how sometimes the block passage is somehow somewhere else. Um, but most of the time, it's fairly near to where the Tomb of Shadows is. So you're like, oh, we'll just walk over and we're done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right, though. It sometimes shows up where you have to walk around a little bit more. Yeah. All right. That being said, there is an agenda. Six Tomb Threshold. Once it advances, it's an enemy! Ah. Ta-da! Specter of Death. It has the alert keyword. <laughs> it does. It does. Um, notably, though, what it does also has that while it's exhausted, it takes one less damage. So that is pretty tough. Um, it is. With uh, yeah. five times players, it's kind of tough to get enough damage on this guy before it attacks you. So you really do want to evade it, but you don't. Yeah. It's a pretty high health pool. It has ghoul priest health. Mm -hmm. Um and it has it honestly has all the same things too. Two damage to horror, hunter, and retaliate. It doesn't have the four fight. That would be pretty tough if that was the case. But yeah, four fight. Four, You're also three. in the six scenario, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, he's not bad. So the, his big thing is that he spawns at the starting location and will slowly make his way over to you. Yes. In addition to Ishimaru, for some reason, I always get Ishimaru and the Spectre of Death to pop up around the same time. Hmm. So they move together, and that's honestly kind of scary. That's really scary. <laughs> that's a lot of health. A lot of fight values as well. So what happens with me most of the time is, I don't know about her, but um, I've already found the block passage, and I'm just trying yeah. to like wait for this guy to come closer so I can kill him for the two victory points. Because two victory exactly. points is pretty good. That is pretty good. All right. Uh, that's pretty much the scenario. You have two ways to get out, depending on what you chose to do with the Man of the Pallid Mask, and uh, you just got to get out. Yeah, with some you know really fun mechanics with where you're going so um i guess we should look at the encounter cards because they make a big difference too yeah we have three catacombs docents this old yes. man is looking at a skull and uh you he's an enemy though like it's so weird that this guy like he seems like he's not doing anything he should be aloof but he actually is not yeah he should be aloof uh i guess once you get into his business he really doesn't like it yeah. Um, or I actually, I think the thematics is that you get into his business and he talks about the catacombs so much that he gives you horror. Yeah, that's, that's always true. my headcanon. That's um, true. Humanoids who do horror are not like fighting you, really. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, this catacombs docent is really cool. They spawn at the nearest unrevealed location, aka locations you want to move into. Mm -hmm. And so you're most likely going to encounter them. Or maybe you're like, okay, we're not going to go back there. We don't need to go. And then they explode. Oh. Um, this corpse dweller is such a cool interaction. You discard a humanoid in from play and replace it with the corpse dweller. The humanoid is becoming a corpse dweller. Um, and notably, the ghouls and the uh, in the other encounter sets are also humanoids. So they can't explode. Mm -hmm. okay, Important. So, Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, if there aren't any humanoids, then uh, it just discards and it gains certain sets. So if you happen to draw one of these guys early uh, and there's no enemies out, then... You just don't get them. Yes. You'll get them maybe later. Important note, the man in the pallet mask is a humanoid enemy. They fix this in the return to. The corpse dweller cannot explode the man in the pallet mask. But also, um, you should you should make that change yourself. You should make that change so that you don't get soft locked. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention, um, when you're trying to kill the man in the pallet mask, uh, he has plus... Uh, oh, yeah. Whatever health, right? player. One per mask health. Yeah, so... Killing him is not just the uh, use the investigate or just engage and do three damage. It's uh, a little bit beefier. Yep, that is true. Anyway. And it's not just one investigate. You have to get the two per clues. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so yeah, this guy will explode. He's huge. Five so, health. Gross. Uh, Hunter and retaliate as well. Yeah, I mean, it's a, there's three of them, right? So they could all get into play and you'll be, hmm. Yeah. Okay. A lot of enemies. Eyes in the walls? Yes. Basically, a rotting remains. I don't know if the divided as evenly as possible has ever come up for me because I mostly do that anyway. But what, what's, what do you usually do? Well, if you've already done it once, right, you might have to defeat an ally that you didn't want to. Sure, that is true. Um, like if you have Doctor Mylan who already has a horror on him, um, then you'd have to defeat him because you can't put all three on yourself. For example. Yep. Yeah. What's with so, the haircut of the guy in the art? Yeah, I don't know. They're, it, those eyes are looking at something, and that guy's yeah. just there. This definitely feels like a uh, an old Arkham or the board game art. Yeah. <laughs> just kind of put it here. Yep. 
Okay. Um, a few more from this set. We've got the pit below. It's a great, below. great hazard. Great edge yes, type I... of a uh, hazard too. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. As I was saying, it makes you uh, want to move. Um, it means you do, you don't want to stick around. Um, importantly, the whole like it's kind of weird because I I feel like a li it's a little unintuitive. The forced effect at the end of the round still discards the pit below even if no one was there. Um, yes. And so it's important. Is just if everyone leaves, it still gets discarded. It's fine. Um, and by the way, the rules on that is because it 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 every effect you do every effect at the end of the round, and it doesn't say then comment requiring a previous effect. So. You know, it doesn't also say if there is at least an investigator at the, at the location, etc. Um, so everything happens. Every investigator in the attached location gets three damage, and you discard it. I always so, yeah. forget about the plus one shroud. It's hidden. In that the is middle, true. <laughs> yeah. You always think about the three damage, and you're like, okay, oh, plus one shroud. Okay. Most of the shrouds in this one are pretty low. There's a couple like mm -hmm. four or five, but most of them are yeah. like two. Yeah. They also get uh, in the return too. There's a little, there's some that are higher, but uh, yeah, in this one they're pretty okay. Okay, the next one is like one of my favorite encounter cards of all time. Yes, absolutely. I love just just looking at the text as an action. You look behind you. Just in a, in a vacuum is like so good. Um, so yeah, if you did not take the action ability to look behind you, you must either discard all your resources or discard all cards in your hand. And then you, then you just go to shadow behind you. Importantly, it says a then comma. So you have to do one of the other in order for this to resolve. Um, so all uh, your, yeah, all of your resources can be one. All of your cards Indeed. can be won. So that's yes. pretty much how you should play it. I have accidentally been like, okay, yeah, I'm just going to knock the action. I'll lose one resource. And then I accidentally spent my last resource. And I was like, oh, fuck. Did I just fuck myself? <laughs> <Lose> <laughs> I cards? discarded five cards. Yeah. Oh, no. That was a fun time. So if you have no cards and no resources, nothing happens. Correct. Because this has the then comma. Mm -hmm. And it still, and it still stays in your threat area. There's three of them. Yep. So... I don't know, like this is one where you really do spend a good number of actions to look behind you until you find the right moment, I think. That's true. I feel like I most, I I don't know, maybe it's my play style. I kind of play a little low to the ground when it comes to resources. So more often than not, I'm already ready to just be like, oh, I have one resource, I'll just lose it. Um, but yeah. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. yeah. But yeah, I mean, I'm happy to to do it and like say, look, I need to play my cards and then I'll get rid of like, even if it's three remaining ones or something. Yeah, exactly. Because it's at a certain point, the action loss does add up. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Nice. These guys are back. Um, yep. They're fine. I mean, it they're is, fine. it's the, the same problem we talked about in the first uh, scenario where if you don't have a spell or relic at this point, well, can be annoying. Um, Spirit Torment is interesting here too because in the very first scenario, uh, I was a little critical of the fact that the map was tough. Like there's yeah. a lot of dead ends. This mm -hmm. time, not so much. I do feel like it does matter. Yes. But because you are trying to move a lot. Uh, but I do feel like you can figure out a way around. Like you don't have to go like double back through these locations. Yeah. If your map is somewhat favorable, you can like move around this card. Um, you can. Like, uh, if it spawns at a dead end, you basically never have to go back there, unlike the first scenario. Um, so yeah, there are ways around this card in more ways than the first scenario. Yeah. So it's, it's cool. Placing one of your clues isn't so terrible, too. I think there's more than enough clues on the map mm -hmm. to, yeah. to move around. Because of the stone archways, you often aren't spending your clues. Yep. So And uh, you basically get extra two clues if you interviewed Haruko Her uh, as well. That's true. Um, so or that's, player yeah. clues, right? Player clues, correct. I I always assume two players for some reason, but yeah. <laughs> oh, I will say, speaking of spending clues, uh, if you have newspaper two. Oh my goodness. You just run Oh, around. press pass. Press pass. Press pass, yeah. Wow. Daryl likes going through catacombs, just taking pictures of everything. Yep. Yeah, I mean. Take a picture of a pit. <laughs> so, so dropping your clues is not terrible. Yes. Okay. Uh. Grasping hands we haven't seen since the core, right? That is correct. Yeah, I'm glad to see it back. Me too. There's a fair amount of damage in this one, which makes sense for you know the the pit and. You know. Yep. Uh, the ghouls, I think, are here just for explosion purposes. Explosion fodder. Yes. <laughs> so, for if for some reason you didn't kill them immediately, 
or if the game one two combos you which is like you drew a cool minion and then someone else draws a corpse trailer yes that's always a fun time yeah and four player that's gonna happen yes and uh crypt chill i think the chill. the obscuring fog crypt chill makes sense thematically yep, in you're this one. in a crypt yep um obscuring fog kind of mostly does nothing <laughs> i found i agree yeah but that's usually how it goes anyway so except for the time it drops on a five shroud location and you need to succeed yeah. by two yeah it happens <laughs> but usually you're like okay whatever yeah um all is right. that it like we had 25 minutes of this scenario we we tend to talk more about the other ones i guess so i mean should we talk about the tokens real fast yeah tokens are uh skulls can be tough could be skulls can be tough five for a while yeah yeah in this case our uh tomb of shadows is one two three four five yeah that's uh yeah. minus five in that location that's usually how it goes as well i i think that the skulls are very fairly like that's usually how it is by the end of the scenario when you're in the tomb of shadows you're like oh god we're far away um so yeah the other tokens are are pretty good too so yeah. uh the cultist is if you Cultus is if you succeeded the last scenario, but you did not intrude on a secret meeting. Okay. That seems actually really awful. This attack deals one less damage. Yeah, it can be very bad. Because, um, like, I mean, for example, you could be attacking the Spectre of Death, and you had a lot of damage planned out, but a lot of it gets wasted by the tokens, um, and it's exhausted, it's already taking one less damage to begin with. Not an if you fail effect because you know obviously it happens on success. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's it's pretty bad. I can even see like going into someone who has a even a, a ghoul minion to engage with them, and you're saying I'm going to take a a swing with my uh, I don't know your machete. Machete. Well, not machete. Uh, something else that does uh, two damage. Well, oh. whatever it is, a uh, fire extinguisher, level three. There you go. Sure. Um, and you draw one of those, and you only do one damage, and then this guy attacks your friend anyway, so you can't be a hero. Yeah. Um, I have had the tablet quite often recently. Yes, the tablet is if you intruded in a secret meeting and succeeded, as in you found Nigel Engram. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's tough. <laughs> yep. um, is Nigel Engram a, go a, a ghoul and a geist? Maybe. Well, he certainly is at the is. end of your little That is true. Counter. That is but, true. It's uh, coming back to haunt you. This guy is a guy, so that's bad. That is bad. I I just realized they put reminder text on this token. They did. There's more wow. than one. You choose one. That's good. Wow. I'm sure that because it was in playtesting, like, do all of them attack me? <laughs> um. Okay. And then finally, the elder thing. If everyone died last scenario, or the agenda ran out in the doubt run, um, as in you failed. Mm -hmm. You go get a ghoul or a geist if you fail. Ugh. That's okay. Yeah, that's, if you yeah. fail, something bad happens. I guess that's okay. Yeah. Albeit, that is... like it can, That can be bad. So I think this is a really good scenario for Defiance. Either level 0 mm. or level 2. Yeah. Just it's pretty good. That, there, that, that means you get to ignore the uh, modifier and effects of your chosen token or for level 2 for all of those symbol tokens. <laughs> okay it's just a good scenario it's fun because you just don't you can't plan it right yep and i think anything that happens is good like fun yeah. good yeah I, I like arkham that has you think about what's our way out of this like what's the best thing i can do this turn and i think phantom truth the last one that we had last week was is also really good in that way of kind of puzzling out here's what everything's going to happen this turn um but this one has a little bit less of a, a script that you can even follow from the beginning since the map is itself quite random. Yep. Yeah. There's so many different things that can happen in this scenario, but none of it feels like none of it feels bad because it was random. It just feels like it's all variety. Yeah. Um, Resolutions. Let's talk about them. Okay. So importantly, uh, so R1 is the way out. So that's the conviction one. Got it. So R1, actually, well, I should say, regardless of what happens, you know the side of the gate. Um, and R1 is just, you know that. R2 is if you went doubt. So you went to the uh, uh, 
the gate to hell. No, sorry. You went to the block passage, right? Mm -hmm. You also get two additional tally marks under chasing the stranger if you go that way. So that is one more than you what you would have gotten because you just defeated him if you went conviction, right? That's right. Am I getting that right? Yep. Okay. So yeah, um, you get different tokens for that. That's not the important bit. The important bit is if you failed this scenario. Because this is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Yep. Because each investigator can choose to read Act 2 of The King in Yellow, aka the actual play written by Robert W. Chapers? <laughs> is that right? Well, I mean, in the story, it says that you uh, you find it, right? Right. You find it. I want to... Where is this? Can I read it? <laughs> is it real? <laughs> Is it? I don't know. I Sounds mean, like a cause... doubt conviction, my friend. <laughs> Indeed. Um, anyway, so each person who does, oh, sorry, each investigator who does read it has to record that they read it. They get a madness or packed weakness, but they earn two additional experience. Again, this is very fail forward here. And uh, it's so cool. Have you ever done it? I've never failed this scenario, so no. <laughs> okay, I have once. I have okay. seen this before, and I, th I thought it was so cool when I read it. I was like, wait, what? I don't remember yeah. this before. And <laughs> yeah, and, and extra weakness is kind of funny in this campaign because there's so many weaknesses that it gives you. Yep. However, I'll take two XP. That's that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, all right. That was the important bits about the ending of the scenario. Yeah, no, it's I cool. just wanted to point that out. You're right. I totally forgot about that. All right. Yep. So we'll talk about some replayability and... I mean, is there much to say here? I think we've talked about how it's incredible, right? It's incredible. I'm putting it at a five. Yeah, I think too. it is. I, I think it's one of the, if not the most replayable scenario in the whole game, uh, which is definitely saying something. Um, I was telling this to you before we recorded, but this scenario mechanic, the catacombs is so cool that someone made a custom campaign that was entirely this mechanic. Um, not entirely. Four of the four out of the eight scenarios. Um, because it's just so cool and it's so variable and it lends itself to so many different circumstances. Like, I want to see FFG return to this mechanic somehow. Like, I want them to do this again because it's just so good. So the closest they've come in my mind is Innsmouth with the title tunnels in the very first scenario. Is that, that is right? true. Yes. Uh, I think also, I also get a little bit from Devil's Reef. Um, the construction of the islands, albeit every island is the same. It's just where they are and what locations are on each island is different. Right. Um, but yes, the first scenario with tile tunnels does very much change um, how the, the 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 locations are spread out. But those ones don't give you a choice or define the difference between uh, you know uh, below left or to the right. They always spawn those in those three. Um, this one, like, each location spawns it in a different direction, and you can sometimes have a choice. And uh, Anyway, um, but yes, yeah, right. there are some other scenarios that do this. But again, I want more of this. Give me more of it. Yeah, they really don't have a reason to not go back to... I, I know they don't want to, like, do a, a reskin of the same scenario. Yeah. But I think they can do something with this. Even yeah. Even Edge of the Earth had had some big maps that you didn't build out, but you didn't know what the locations were. And at least there were three different versions with uh, City of the Elder things. Yep. That like kind of scratches the itch, but not really. This is the the choices, the fact that you flipped over and then you find out. So good. It's so good. Yeah. I've played this one a I lot. Mean, it... I mean, I think people play this one in standalone because it's, yep. you know, that good as a cohesive thing. Mm -hmm. All right. Fairness. Fairness. I mean, I think ultimately it is very fair as well. Um, I always find that the amount of doom in this scenario is the right amount. Um, if you, you know, sprint all the way as fast as you can, you can do this scenario in actually a fairly low amount of time. But if you're taking your time, getting the victory as much as you can, looking for the locations using those, you know, action abilities on the locations or the, uh, uh, the catacombs docent mm -hmm. um, and you like want to get all the victory you want to defeat the specter of death you have like just barely enough time and so I always feel like it 
as like they're just the right amount of pressure. What do you think? I agree. I think that usually you can get out on time it kind of depends on where the block passage is if you're doing that but yep. the last time i played this the camp the the, the zoe care uh investigator in our deck had uh um smite the wicked show up and spawn a non-hunter <laughs> oh god well that's one mental trauma no we, we had time to go back oh okay wow uh, nice yeah so that that was like enough time to do it and then get out, but it was very close because honestly, it wasn't the time as much as our um, uh, damage and horror because mm. I mean, grasping hands is a real thing. Yep. The horror is not as bad, but it can come um, from the eyes and the walls, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's not just like a let's explore around and have a fun time. There's a, a lot of treacheries here that are meaningful. But yeah, we had, I don't think the block passage was all the way at the um, end with the Tomb of Shadows. It was somewhere in the middle. So it made it like okay. But we had to sit down there and decide, decide um, are we going to give Zoe a mental trauma or are we going to uh, take a chance here? And we had to fight through some of the corpse dwellers just to get there. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's a that's a that's really nice. Time. Maybe that's what happened. Maybe um, it was a corpse dweller that we spawned. Mm. from it and then it had to take the place of a catacombs docent that we sent off into a corner so it still took a while for it to come back towards us but maybe we met it kind of in between i don't remember exactly now but it was still something where we had to make a decision like is it worth the next couple of rounds or do we just get out we did it though nice nice yeah um all right so as for the rating um additionally i think that Yes, the construction of the catacombs is random, but you have sometimes choices whether to put those locations. You have choices where you can, you know, double back in case your locations you get aren't uh, good enough for you, like those the, the narrow shaft, for example. And I do think there's a lot of decisions that comes with, you know, are we pressing forward in this direction? Do you want to go somewhere else and maybe loop around? There's a lot of things here. I think I'm going to put it also at a five. All right. Yeah, it's like, what really are the random elements besides the locations? Whether or not the uh, corpse dwellers spawn? Yeah. It's not that big of a deal. You can either handle that or you handle them. Yeah. Yeah, and you have all the time. There are no cards that add doom. Mm -hmm. So you have a predictable amount of time. Yeah, I mean... I don't know how to dock any points off this one. <laughs> okay. Well. There are multiple paths. There are multiple paths. Um, um, I mean, I don't like the bit about the discarding. Yeah. So, Although I guess, is that is that balance? I mean, does it allow for multiple paths or strategies? I mean, it only, oh, that's true. To me, to me, I'm not going to do the uh, conviction. Yeah thing just because why right is there any benefit for doing that uh no <laughs> you get less chasing the stranger as well hmm. i guess if it's easier for you you just want to leave um yeah. perhaps if the gates of hell wasn't the starting location maybe sure it was like near the end um but yeah that's fair i think that the the, the ending for the conviction specifically is kind of bad um, and I guess if we're putting it in balance when it comes to like, it's not fair that, or yeah, it's like, it's kind of un imbalanced in the fact that like you have a, your decision to go conviction kind of being a, a little bit out, uh, a little bit frowned upon, I guess. Well, the other um, part is that the clues on the location itself are the exact number of clues you need to get to spend. Right. Right. So the victory point there is like for the taking, if you're going the doubt run. Yeah. So I guess if you don't want victory, you go conviction. There you go. Um, there you go. You really don't want uh, victory because those locations go away anyway. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, I'll dock it for that. But I do think there's also, like, it is get clues and move. So it is fairly balanced in that sense um, where anyone can get clues and anyone can just go and make the catacombs as much as you want. Um, so yeah, what what 
what do you think? I'm curious as to what you think. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm going to give it a four and a half um, just to mark it off for that one little thing. I think yep. the treacheries and the balance of enemies are, are is good. Mm-hmm. You can have, you know, pretty much anything you want to do for your deck, you can do it. And agility and willpower, I think, are tested fairly equally here. Yep. Uh, I will give it a four just because I'm upset about them discarding locations. <laughs> you also would take off lots of points for the uh, the Biakis not having victory points in the return two. Indeed. If we were giving I guess. ratings for those. <laughs> I guess. That's fine. Okay. I don't know. This one's okay. just a five for me, I think. I, it's it's also a five. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, uh, it's so good. Like, I... Again, it's catacombs. Like, you can't go wrong with this as catacombs. I don't know. They just, they nailed it. I think they nailed it. It feels like catacombs. The enemies feel perfect for the catacombs. The docent is really cool. Yep. yep. The, um, the locations all do some interesting things. Like, it, feel, it feels like you're running into dead ends. Like, literally, yep. you are. Um, the locations with lights make you not have to spend clues. Yep. I don't know. What else is there to say? I I don't know. Yeah. It's good. It's more it's of so this, good. please. <laughs> yes. Again, I want I want this I want this scenario, but it's like eight scenarios long. <laughs> I don't know how to do how they would do that. I mean, it it is interesting, right? Cuz it is kind of a I mean, it's a dungeon crawler, right? It's a yeah. a little bit of like a roguelike in the sense that you're um you don't really know what's happening and you're trying to get to the end. Yeah. Um, but in terms of like the, the different rooms, you don't know until you show up in them. Uh, yeah. So I'm surprised they haven't tried this sort of thing again. I know we talked about other things that were a little bit similar, but they could do other things that are like this. Yeah, I definitely think they could. I think it actually is fairly difficult to make this scenario. That's just my that's just my uh, intuition or my guess, I should say, because it feels so perfectly balanced on a knife edge. As to the exact distribution of the locations, the directions that they produce, the amount of clues on those locations, the amount, like the shroud values of the locations relative to how many clues that they have on them, it's like perfectly constructed. And I feel like it's hard to replicate the like balance that this scenario has in that respect. Yeah, I agree. I think that it's so good that they might be afraid to try it again. Right, and they do want to do new things but oh i'm thinking of light of the fog because also kind of has a little bit of this too but again it's not yeah a little bit not filling out the map in in quite the same way um when you play this in in paper it does do some interesting things to your table and like moving things around to make sure you have (laughs) that is true but i like that i like when when a uh when a scenario does that to you Mm -hmm. all right well let's see if the return to is any better right yeah all right Join us there, or if not, we'll talk to you about scenario number seven in a little bit. I guess in a little bit, I mean in a week. Okay, Okay, this scenario was so good that they made very few changes to it. Very, very few changes. Literally nothing in the encounter deck except for one card which is added is different. Mm -hmm. Um, And only four new Catacombs locations are added to the deck, which are included. However, it doesn't lengthen the Catacombs deck. It replaces four, albeit... I think, didn't they add, like, somewhere that there's, like, a challenge mode where you can just add the four as well? Is I that in, like, the... Is maybe, that in the achievement section, maybe? Could be at the back of this. Yeah. So maybe in a... I forgot. There was, there was something that I read somewhere. Okay. Um, I don't remember that, but that sounds cool. Yeah. You can, like, make it longer on purpose. All right, let's look at these new locations. All right, there is the Sea of Skulls. After you yeah. turn here... Uh, you must either take one direct horror or choose and discard three cards in your hand. But also, there's a way to make this connected to, you know, usually a location from, like, the beginning. hmm Yeah. So, so you... you put... So this is, like, a kind of a dead end, but not really. You put the topmost... Just one. Uh, above, below... Oh, sorry. Yeah, one. Above, below, or to the right of the location farthest from this and mark it with a horror token, and then it's connected to it. So you can yeah. kind of warp back to somewhere else. Yeah. This is cool because it adds, again, it adds more variety to the map. Um, it means that it 
is possible that like you know the tomb of shadows pops up all the way to the top and you're like oh god we either have to go through the sea of skulls or like go all the way back out mm -hmm. right um yeah, i think it just adds more variety which is really cool that's good all right next one research site no clues but you can no investigate it to reveal any catacombs location yeah. so it's like you're investigating you get one per clues <laughs> that's true that is very true okay okay yeah six shroud though and you get above below or to the right classic um of any other location oh sorry any other location that's really cool because again like you are oh god that's actually i love this card now because you are like digging into I, I i feel like i've never seen this for some reason maybe it just didn't show up but you're like you know you're in a research site so you're investigating it and it's giving you information about a catacombs somewhere else um that's really cool yeah so you basically get to put a location into play where you want yes and then you can investigate here to reveal it yeah cool that's pretty cool all yeah. right mound of bones yep so this one you put four locations into play i don't think that's happened before right that is impossible I okay believe. you're right you're only gonna put three in. you're only gonna put <laughs> three but the other yes. ones that say put three in it's likely that you won't get three right so this one is for no matter what this is going to be surrounded by other locations yeah okay and so uh that's cool and then you get uh this guy yeah which he is also just in the encounter deck i believe mm -hmm. so you could just draw him um but if you go here at the end of the round, you might have to draw him again. That's true. So this guy, when he would resolve its hunter keyword, he just goes right to the location nearest to an investigate. Yeah, so he's always one location away. A minimum. Right? Does it go maximum to is the location nearest to an investigator where the investigator is? Move it to the catacombs location nearest to an investigator. Uh oh. <laughs> I think that the intention is that it is one away, but rules is written that would be their location. Which right, is exactly. no, no. Though these locations are not catacombs locations. That's right. Catacombs oh. are the locations on the back. Okay. 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 Yes. All right. Okay. So it yes. goes to an unrevealed location. It does. I don't know why it doesn't just say is, that, but is that true for all of them? None of them have traits? Yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh... I remember why that made sense to me. I was like, what the heck? Um, but yeah, so this one is always uh in a revealed, sorry, in an unrevealed catacombs, waiting for you to get near until it hunts to you when you're run away. Or until you get to this, the mount of bones. The mount of bones. Of course. Okay, okay. I don't think I played yeah. this correctly when I did it before. Oh, interesting. Anyway, or, it, it, when it attacks, it has the uh, that enemy from the Unspeakable Oath text. Yep. Either damage damage or, horror. or that's, horror. That's still huge. Honestly, now to think about it, probably I didn't misplay this. I think I only encountered him when oh, yeah. the Mound of, got to the Mound of Bones. So. That is fair. Hmm. Anyway, cool card. Uh, I, one evade is good. You can evade it. Not a video. And now I'm just remembering, okay, you only spawn him at the end of the round. Yes. Okay. That is cool. I think I, I get what it's trying to do. Like he's gonna yeah. pop out of the mound of bones and then he's a malformed skeleton. All right. Yep. yep. Cool. Last one. Secret passage. Okay. Again, the I I don't know why I love all these ones. Because this one is if you control the class of Black Onyx, aka you went uh you took it from mm -hmm. the conviction. Uh, historical society. You can reveal the catacomb location to the right of the secret passage, and uh, obviously it has a thing to put it into the right. Um, that's cool. That's like a neat like campaign thing that you did, so you can are rewarded for it. That's awesome. Yeah, and you have to play it too. Yeah, you do have to play. It. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, it's better than investigating a five shot location, especially yeah. on like four player probably. Yeah, I do think the biggest downside is that none of these locations have victory and so most likely they might replace a location that did have victory yeah we talked about this in the very first scenario i don't know how to fix that problem when it's random right yeah like i'm sure that what they could do is they could be like replace four of the non-victory locations or like if you know two of these had victory two of them didn't then you could separate them like yeah, replace two victory two non-victory then you shuffle them all together and do the things but 
Yeah, make a pile. And they did this yeah. with Forgotten Age, where like they had connection locations that were like replace one for the other, in random like in four piles or something. But they can't do that with these since there are no connections on them. Yeah, yeah, that's unfortunate. It is the one bad thing about the return tube, but it does. Add, I like the locations. Like they're cool. They're really cool. They're great. They're great design. They really yeah. are. Um, is there anything else that's different? Yeah, there is the uh, reminder here that uh, A, yeah. <laughs> we didn't talk about this before, but A, the Man of Palmas cannot leave the Tomb of Shadows. I mentioned a little bit about the uh, the health of Man of Palmas is bigger, but it actually is only if he's at the Tomb of Shadows. Right, so, I don't know why I didn't just say the Man of the Palmas has plus one. Yeah, I don't for... know. It's weird. So like people like engaged him and then dragged him away. And then he yeah. just died. He just he died. <laughs> <laughs> and then the uh, thing we talked about where everyone should play it this way. The Man of Pal Mask does not count as a humanoid for the purpose of the Corpse Dweller's spawn ability. Yeah, he does explode. Please don't do that. Mm -hmm. And if you're playing as non-taboo, he's still humanoid if you want to, to uh, what is it, persuasion or interrogate? Correct. Yeah. Okay. This one, I mean, did it need all of this? No, it was already perfect, but um, it's almost like an expansion pack, right? Like you yeah. have a, a really good game, board game that you have, and then it's like, here, to make this game last a little bit longer, add a few extra cards. Indeed. It's cool. Uh, I love the variety. Adding, again, wh when a scenario is perfect, just adding more variety to the scenario, when the strength of the scenario was that it was varied, uh, is good. Very good. Yep. All right. Any last words? Well, I guess if you couldn't tell, this is my favorite scenario in the whole game. <laughs> um, yeah. It's fun. And I, I, yeah. I got to just say again, earlier when we built the map out and saw something we hadn't seen before, we have played this scenario a lot. This is not yes. like, you know, we're just opening it up for the second or third time and said, what does the map do? Like, no, we just randomly did it. And that speaks to the strength of um, of this scenario. It's It's wonderful. Yeah. I've never seen a stone archways have three connecting locations. That's so cool. Yeah. Okay. Join us next week. We are going to talk about Black Star's Rise because uh, that is the next scenario. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. See you then.